Amen. Thank you, Raul. And welcome back. We're glad you're feeling better. It is the time of the year to be uh, mindful, especially as we share the peace that we're not also sharing uh, cold and flu and other viruses as COVID. So be creative, be creative. Welcome and good morning on this Christ the King and Giving Intention Sunday. Um, you are invited, I was uh, hoping to give a reminder for uh, dressing the sanctuary for Advent. A lot of that will take place today after services, so there is something for everyone. And look for Jan <laughs> to uh, tell you where to go uh, as we uh, decorate today. Um, Corda Luke's has a Christmas concert next Sunday, and there are two um, performances. Look for a congregational discount code early this week. As soon as we get it, we'll email that out to, to folks that uh, if you want to participate in that. Last year, it was absolutely beautiful, and I'm sure this year will be also. Um, your, I think everyone who came in, you have a packet that will help you prepare for the congregational meeting in two weeks. If you didn't get one, let us know. We have some antiquated uh, things in our database that we have. We still have adult children that are, are attached to parents, and we've not been able to figure out how to get those out. So there might be one label for an entire family, even though they are adults, <laughs> and out of the house. So we apologize for that. We're going to keep working on that. <clears throat> um, Paula is out of town, I do believe, still today, and so I don't know if there's an update. I believe we are up to at least 18,000 on our uh, project, and that's exciting. We are having difficulty uh, landing uh, a contractor to even like give us bids, so that's slowing the process down a little bit. So if you know a I don't know if, if, a, if a home uh, contractor could do, I think it's a small enough job that it probably could be, but there may be some commercial things and I don't know all the ins and outs of that. But if you know someone who might be interested or who might know more, um, uh, to ask them to be in touch with me or Jim Graff, and we're gonna keep trying to move forward on that. Any other announcements that I may have missed? I want to a, a welcome back to Barbara, who uh, was with us last year at this time and joined us for all things church until she went back to North Dakota. And my understanding is you have moved here. So we are excited to welcome you uh, home. Yeah, that's great. All right. Um, I'm thankful for you all. And as we kind of wrap up this Thanksgiving uh, weekend, and invite us to rise and sing, crown him with many crowns, hymn 855.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We be forget what we do in our hearts. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome, and in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, 
and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus is the Lord God to them. I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and sh shoulder and butted all, at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be ruler among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Word of God, word of life. We shall sing Psalm 95 verses responsibly. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. The second reading is from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which God has called you, what are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe according to the working of God's great power. God put this power to work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of power in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And God has put all things under the feet of Christ, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is the body of Christ, the fullness of the one who filled all in all. Word of God, word of life. All right, I invite last year's I last year's, last week's <laughs> um, big kids who came because we have some unfinished business with that and any other littles to come up or big littles if you want. Ronan, you can join us if you want. Come on up. Yeah. And we have Noah coming. Awesome. All right, come on up. Welcome. 
How you doing, Ronan? Good. Good, Good to see you. And Noah. And we have uh, uh, Rindra, who's representing uh, the group from last week. So we have some unfinished business from last week. If you'll remember, I gave some money to you all. And we're curious what you might have done with it. And you could have done anything you wanted with it. But just a reminder that we are given gifts by God. So it was representing that. And we hope that we use them for good, right? So any reports? I buried mine. <laughs> Okay, that is one way to do things. How about you, Noah? What'd you do with your money? You saved it. Okay. All right. And and he bought cake. (gasps) There's no cake here this morning. He bought cake for the storehouse. Nice. That's beautiful. Thank you, Noah. How about you, Gabriel? What'd you do with your money? Nice. So we have some really good examples. It was like a, a, the, the reading from last week. So we had one who buried their money, and hopefully maybe it'll mysteriously make more money. I don't know. Um, and then the two, you, uh, Gabriel and Noah, uh, purchased some things to help out the storehouse for those folks. If, does it, if everyone know what the storehouse is in New Mexico? If you don't know, it's a fabulous thing to look up online. They are connected. We have Roots uh, uh, members who began that, um, uh, what do I want to say, like a, what's it called? Food pantry pantry was the word I was trying to think of. It is more than a food pantry. They're even fresh fruits and vegetables. They have a refrigerated section, and so it's a fantastic ministry. So thank you for doing that. All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Um, So... What, what do I have here, even though it's made out of paper? A crown. a crown. What do you think of it when you see a crown? Like a king. A king. Noah, do you, is that what you think of too? What do you think of when you hear king? Like a ruler or like someone who's very rich and powerful. Rich and powerful. Okay. How about you, Ronan? Any other? Rowan. Rowan. Sorry, I had his name mixed up. I'm sorry about that, Rowan. What do you think of when you hear about a king? Yeah, you're the main, he's like the main, uh, kind of a leader. Yeah, like yeah. the main leader of the village. Okay, very good, very good. Um, for me, we've, we've named a lot of the things, power and leadership or ruling, and it can be done well, and it can also be done um, not so well, right? It can be taken, uh, power can be taken advantage of. Today... We're going to hear about Jesus. Well, it's Christ the King Sunday. It ends the church year. And what do we think about when we think of Jesus being king? Like ruler of the whole world? Ruler of the whole world, the whole cosmos, really big, right? Did, how, how did Jesus, from the stories that you can recall, how did Jesus rule or make his way in this earth? Was he a, like, power mongering or think of some of the other stories that uh, do, do some stories come to mind maybe we can help out some other stories come to mind of how Jesus walked this earth well, while you're thinking about that he went to the cross and he wore this kind of a crown it was a crown of thorns and they kind of made fun of him because he didn't act like a king that we think of today with all powerful and maybe misusing it. And so they put this crown on his head when he was um, sent to the cross. And it teaches us that the ways that God calls us to act in this world are not necessarily like the ways in which the world operates. So not all kings are bad, Not all kings abuse their power. And certainly Jesus, who is the king of our lives, 
operated very differently and calls us to do the same. In fact, I'm going to read, or Gabriel, would you read? Oh, I don't have a microphone for you. Would you stand up at the microphone and read this verse right here? It's one verse that we're going to hear in our gospel lesson today. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was stronger, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Well, let's, um, let's pray. And then we're going to hear more after you read the whole gospel. Thank you so much for reading that. We pray. Gracious God, thank you uh, that you have shown a different way of leadership in this world. We pray that you continually uh, change our hearts, mold our hearts, that we lead and reach out as you have done. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Invite us to rise. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, when the Son of Humanity comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when, what, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O oh Christ. I invite you to be seated. This past Monday evening, as I was leaving, 
I took note of a man who was sitting in the picnic table uh, as closest to the path that I took in the labyrinth. And an internal dialogue began, Christy, it's dark and you're by yourself. Should you stop? After a few more steps, I did. And we chatted for a bit. And basically, I told him that the resources that might be in the organizations that might be able to help him would be open the next day. And would he be able to come back? And Kyle did indeed return. And we got him and his friend Perez hooked up with sleeping bags, food for a couple of meals, hygiene kits that we have made, and with FaithWorks, who is hopefully networking with other organizations to help with a bus ticket. As we parted ways, three things totally surprised me. One, he was so very thankful for anything that we could provide. Two, and I suppose he could have been making this up because I never saw his friend Perez, but that he was seeking help for his friend who wasn't able to get around very well, that was very neighborly in my book. And three, he said, I have to give you this parting joke. He said, why did the cowboy get a dachshund? Why, you may say? He always wanted to get along, little doggy. <laughs> In our last apocalyptic parable of Matthew 25 and of the entire church year, both the sheep and the goats are as surprised at their interlude with Jesus. The sheep fed the hungry, gave drink to the thirsty, welcomed the stranger, clothed the naked, cared for the sick, and visited the imprisoned. The goats did not. When Jesus calls them out on this, neither the sheep or the goats are surprised by their behavior. They're not surprised at what they did or didn't do. What catches them off guard is that they didn't recognize Jesus. They didn't expect to see Jesus in those faces. Indeed, a revealing image and quite fitting for Christ the King Sunday. For me, the title King carries some notorious baggage. We see it not only in the Hebrew texts of old, but also in leaders today. Ill-used power and tyranny. King David, who is often revered as a most powerful and important king because he united the Israel and Judah into an um, uh, independent state. But in the case of, case of Bathsheba, if you remember that story, he totally misused his power to get what he wanted. And then he lied and he murdered to cover it up. And King Solomon, he's also noted as wonderfully wise and successful. But even he built his kingdom using forced labor. Some of the context of our reading today is that we've jumped ahead hundreds of years after these great kingdoms had come and gone. And now Israel finds themselves occupied by Rome. The people of Jesus' day longed for a new king, right? The one promised by the prophets. The one who would overthrow the Roman government who was occupying their land. And this was the problem with Jesus. He didn't fit any of these images of king. He didn't hold a political office or have a plan to restore Israel as a nation. He didn't have the military might to drive out the occupying forces. 
He didn't exercise his authority like the kings and rulers of the day. He called the meek and healed those who society pushed to the edges. And this, I think, continues to challenge us and our image of God today. Where do we look to see God? Because every Sunday, right, we proclaim Christ the king of our lives. And then surprise, Jesus shows up in the faces of those around us. This is not what we expect of God. God is all-knowing and all-powerful, and God is the creator of everything that we see and do not see, the author of life. Yet this amazing God has a habit of showing up in surprising places. God didn't come to lord it over Israel or Rome or even Albuquerque. Surprise, God came flesh and bone, a tiny baby born in Bethlehem. God didn't come to conquer the world with military or political might. Surprise, God came with all the scandal and shame and suffering of the cross. God continues to come where we least expect heard it in our text, in the hungry, in the thirsty, in the naked, in the lonely, in the oppressed, in the cold, those who do not have the basics. Surprise, you are invited to meet God there, not in some ethereal way or philosophical construct, but in your neighbor's very real need. This is where you see God. Because the God we know in Jesus is revealed, not in power, but in vulnerability. Not in might, but in brokenness. Not in judgment, but in mercy. Mercy over judgment in this text might be a stretch, right? After all, the sheep and the goats are separated according to their deeds. And the goats are sent, not this week with weeping and gnashing of teeth, but into eternal punishment. Ugh. We're still in Matthew. One last Sunday. <laughs> However, another contextual piece of our reading is that Jesus shares this parable on the way to the cross. Literally, chapter 26 begins, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he said, the Passover is coming, and I, the son of humanity, will be crucified. The son of humanity's coming is not so much some final judgment at the end of time, but a final surprise, revealing the fullness of God. This is what Jesus had been trying to say and show all along. What the world did not know, right? What he would soon show through his very body, his very giving of himself, that God loves us, and the world so very much that God came as one of us. Why? So that we would fully understand flesh for flesh, tear for tear, life for life. It is surprisingly good news, right? That God is with us here and now, revealed in one another and all our neighbors. And God is with us in those gestures of mercy. It's not where we expect God to show up, but it is where God is. And it is where we are expected. Amen? Amen.
Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, from Christ we receive our call to feed, clothe, and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of the ELCA World Hunger Programs and their partnerships with Global Feeling Ministries in such places as the Ukraine and Gaza. Bless the feeding program here at Albuquerque Hope Works and those who volunteer in its ministry. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all creation, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field. We seek your guidance as we do what we can to protect all the gifts of nature of which you have made us stewards. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we know merciful judgment. We pray that rulers of every nation may be led to serve in ways of humble leadership and wise decision making. May we find ways to advocate for aid to come to all who are underserved and that care may come to any who are neglected. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we feel the depth of your love and care toward us, like those of our people who assist with the immigrants and refugees who come to our country Use our hands and hearts to nourish all who hunger and are isolated. Surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We especially pray for those who are listed in our bulletin today and for all who suffer in any way. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we are made the people of his pasture, Inspire those among us who support the social and outreach ministries of this congregation. We pray for all people who serve and attend to the needs of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, in Christ we are welcomed home. We praise you, praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served you and extended your welcome and love to us. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with those worshiping online and with one another. Peace be with you.
One thing I'm sure of, one thing I know, God walks beside me wherever I go. He'll never leave me, he's there to stay. God holds my hand, he lights my way. God's love is perfect, his arms are strong. He's right here with me, I'm not alone. When my heart's broken, he's there to mend. He is my Savior, he is my friend. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. He's right here with me, I'm not alone. When my heart's broken, he's there to mend. He is my Savior. God's love is perfect. His arms are strong. He's right here with me, I'm not alone. When my heart's broken, he's there to mend. my friend.
Yes, it's me again. For the past few weeks, we've been thanking God and our ancestors in the faith for bringing our beloved St. Paul Church safe thus far through the 130-odd years of ministry. And many of those years were very odd indeed. And then we've had a look around at how much has extended, how our ministry has extended out into the community and beyond as we answer God's call to bring Christ's gospel of love, peace, and compassion to a world that needs it more and more with each passing day. We've even, through our partnership with the Rocky Mountain Synod and Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and many other organizations and individuals, and we've extended our ministry across an appreciable part of the globe. So what is God, God calling us to do now as we reflect on this long and broad record? What else but keep doing it? That is why today we on this feast of the Christ the King, the, the liturgical calendar equivalent of New Year's Eve, we offer our intentions to give, to maintain, and strengthen St. Paul's ministry. Actually, you can start right now. If you have your giving intention card with you, bring it forward, come down the center aisle, drop it in the basket, go out on the side, just like you do on communion. If you don't have your intention card with you, don't despair. You can bring it with you next Sunday or get it to the office one way or another. There are addresses in the bulletin. And for those of you who online, our contact information will be uh, displayed at the end of the broadcast. Would you please stand for the litany of thanksgiving? Gracious God, we give you thanks for all those who have made giving intentions to this congregation that the mission and ministry we share with our neighbors and world will continue to grow. We give you thanks for the many gifts we bring. For every gift of support, large and small, to enable the ministry of St. Paul. We give thanks and praise for every gift and receive them with gratitude. Because of our faith in you, O Lord. We acknowledge you as the source of all that we have and all that we are. You have poured out abundance upon us. Grant us wisdom to use our blessings to your glory and to the service of humankind. Guide us in our discernment that we become more faithful and enable the mission and ministry of St. Paul to reach beyond ourselves to those in need. For all this we pray in the name of our Savior and friend, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of all goodness, 
generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise, O oh God. Your love is forever faithful from age to age. When your people were scattered and oppressed, you promised through your prophets to gather them home and feed them. In your child, Jesus, your promises have been fulfilled. A servant king who does not exploit power. A shepherd who seeks the lost. A nurse who binds up the wounded and a friend who feeds the hungry. When he was killed, you raised him from the dead and seated him at your side in the heavenly places. Now your incredible power is at work in us. You have clothed us in compassion so that we might help clothe others in this same compassion. You continue to gather your children into your kingdom, which you prepare for all from the foundation of the world. And so with the earth and the sea and all their creatures, with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took a bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of of me. And together, as we continue to live into the kingdom, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. There is a place for everyone at God's table. Come, feast at Jesus' table. I invite you to be seated as those who are at home and who are remaining in their pews prepare their, their communion.
body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. Come.
Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Soon and very soon. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be good. <laughs> For campers back. <laughs>